What's up YouTube? Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my first 10 things to do with your Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Now I just got the Huawei Mate 20 Pro imported from UK. I bought it from Clove UK. If you're interested in importing one of these and you're in the US, I'll drop a link below in the description so you can check it out. Now I know the phone's not officially coming to the US, but since this is an international channel, a lot of people watch it from various places. I did want to make the first 10 things video for all the people out there in Europe and also Asia and Canada who might be buying this phone because it's a really good looking phone. So as usual with my first 10 things video, I'm gonna run down the first 10 things that I do when I get the new phone in hand. Today I have the keep document right here so you can follow along below if you want. The first thing is set up fingerprint scanner or face unlock. Now of course you can set up both of these if you desire. I'm only using the fingerprint sensor right now which is in display fingerprint sensor, uh, mainly because I just wanted to see how that goes first and then try the face unlock later. Now, the security and privacy section is where you would do this. Fingerprint ID is right there, so if you can tap on that, you can go ahead and roll your fingerprint. Face recognition is right there, and of course, if you just wanna use a lock screen password, old school style, you can do that as well. So the fingerprint sensor here, so far in my experience, is actually pretty good, so I would recommend giving it a try. It is in display, so you have to rest your finger right there. It is a little bit slower than the fingerprint sensors we're used to seeing in the past uh, with rear mounted or front mounted uh, scanners that are not in display, but a pretty good overall. I've also heard great things about the facial recognition, but you definitely want to get some sort of security, biometric security set up right away. The next thing is remove any bloatware. So the phone doesn't come with that much bloatware. I think there's a couple of apps like booking.com. It does come with a lot of Huawei stock apps though, which are if you're a US user, you might not be interested in a lot of these Huawei stock apps like Translator, etc. Uh, you can uninstall most of these things, and that's what I'm gonna go through and finish doing after I get done with the video. Uh, there's quite a few apps that are Huawei first party apps. That is a US user I'm just not gonna be too interested in. And Booking.com and some of the games that come installed as well, depending on where you import from, they all seem to be removable so you don't have to worry about taking up space on your phone with those bloatware apps. The next thing is to pick a home screen style. So if you are more of a traditional Android user, you might wanna have the app drawer, which I have enabled, but that's not what actually comes enabled by default. If you go into home screen and wallpaper, you'll see right there, home screen style. And then there are two options. You can either have the standard, which is the default setting, where all the apps are on your actual home screens, and that's kind of the iOS approach. A lot of people like this in China and Asia but I like the more Android style of having an app drawer there which enables you to keep all of your apps organized. And as you can see, that's what I have enabled right here. So that's a personal choice that you'll have to make yourself, but I personally like the Android style. The next thing is to decide whether or not you wanna have the notch enabled. So that's a personal decision as well. The notch obviously does come enabled by default, but with most phones these days, you can turn off the notch and you can also do that on the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. If you go into display, and you go into more display settings. Right there, you'll see the notch, and you have the default, which is to have the notch on. You can also turn the notch off if you want, which basically loses some usable screen real estate near the top of the display. To me, I find that personally a little silly. This is what it looks like on the home screen with the notch off. Uh, if the phone comes with a notch, you might as well use it. I know a lot of people don't like the notch, um, and I think eventually we'll get rid of it as more and more sensors get embedded under the glass, but at least you do have the option to get rid of that here if you want. The next thing is also within the display settings, there are two things. Uh, you can choose to make your apps in full screen and you can also change the resolution. So if we go back to the display settings, back up from the notch page, you've got a couple of options here like the full screen display. This can choose which of your apps display in full screen. Um, now you'll probably wanna turn on all of your apps most likely it tells you some apps are not optimized, but usually most of them can be stretched to sort of fill the full screen. And so you can do that. It will say changing the aspect ratio. I'll show you that whole entire message. It says may lead to display errors. Now in all of these apps, I've tried turning it on and it doesn't really lead to any issues. You might just see some stretching of content, which might look a little strange, but it won't cause any crashes or anything like that on your device. Now, if you back up all the way through the display settings, you can also change the screen resolution which you may wanna do because smart resolution becomes enabled by default, which changes the screen resolution based on battery saving if you get low on power. Personally, I wanna take the full sort of advantage of my display when I pay this much money for a phone, so I turned it all the way up to WQHD+. Now I know most people can't really notice the difference between that and FHD+, so if you wanna save some power, you can also decide 
to turn that down right there manually and do that yourself. So that's really, again, a personal decision. There's some battery savings opportunities depending on what you decide to do. The next thing is the navigation system that you wanna use. So if I back up and go to settings here, go to the main settings menu, go down to system at the very bottom here, you'll see system navigation right here. And system navigation allows you to choose from three different options. You can either use three key navigation, which is the classic, I have that enabled right now. The navigation dock, which basically allows you to have a little dock that you can move around to do some gesture type nav, but it's a little strange. Um, you can sort of see how it works here. The navigation dock is a little floating button that allows you to use it to get between your home screen, your back, and your recents. And then a more modern gesture type style here. If you turn that on, you can go into settings. Basically swiping in from the left or the right will be your back gesture. Swiping up will be your home gesture. And swiping up and holding uh, will be your recent apps gesture. Now, I found these gestures to be a little bit annoying, which is why I decided to go with the three-key navigation. Some of the gestures from Samsung on the new version of Android Pie, which I reviewed recently, seem to be a little more intuitive. Uh, I'd like to see why we adopt something like that. These are a little hard to use, and I'll talk more about why in my full review. The next thing is notification management. So, notification management is kind of important because a lot of people have talked quite a bit about how Huawei sometimes hobbles your notifications and things like that. I've talked about it before. Uh, if you go back into the main settings menu and you go to notifications, they've actually improved things quite a bit. They've streamlined the way things work. Uh, lock screen notifications are turned on by default. In old versions of Huawei software, they were actually turned off by default. If you go into more notification settings, you can turn on the pulse notification light choose your notification message, and also choose to turn on the screen with your notifications. Um, if you read through, all the notifications are pretty much enabled now by default, which means you should receive all the important notifications. So I think Huawei has done an amazing job with their notification screen. It was one of my biggest complaints about some of their older versions. They've really streamlined it, so there's some features in here that you can choose to turn on or not, but it's not gonna hobble how you actually receive messages on your Mate 20 Pro. And I think that's a huge win, especially for those of us that want to import and use this here in the US. Now the next thing is battery slash power management. And Huawei has also done some weird things with battery and power management before as well. If you go back to the main uh, settings screen and scroll down to battery, you'll notice there's a lot of options here, including performance mode, which optimizes device settings for maximum performance. For instance, if you're gonna be playing intensive games, you also got power and ultra power saving modes. And then this is the really important thing here to take a look at. One, darken interface colors, which you might wanna do. You can see I'm using the dark theme. That does save a little battery. And then also battery usage and app launch. So app launch is really important because by default, Huawei is optimizing sort of how things run in the background. If you wanna receive all notifications instantaneously from things like Twitter, you may wanna manage these sort of uh, manually so you can turn off the manage automatically and you can make sure the settings are to your liking to make sure that it's able to run in the background and things like that. So you can decide how you want it to work, um, but Huawei tries to decide for you how each app should be managed. So far, I haven't ran into any problems, but that is something worth looking at, especially if you have any problems receiving sort of continuous and up to the minute updates from things like Twitter or Instagram. Now, the other thing which I also wanted to mention, which is here, that's the next thing on the list, that is learning to use reverse wireless charging. So it's actually very easy to use the reverse wireless charging feature inside the battery saving uh, modes right there at the bottom. You see wireless reverse charging. The one thing that's kind of annoying is you do have to turn this feature on or off uh, as you wanna use it. So if you turn it on, it'll show you right here that you place the device you want to charge on the back of your phone. I will do some nice demos of this uh, in an upcoming review. It's very easy to use, but I do think it's annoying that you actually have to turn this on each time you wanna do it. If you actually leave this turned on, but you don't place a device here to actually wirelessly charge, what you'll notice is it'll tell you that it's gonna turn off the wireless reverse charging feature, probably to save power, I would guess, um, but you can't just sit a device on here at any time and have it start wirelessly charging. I'll leave it on so we can see what happens. It'll probably occur before the end of the video. The last thing is one of my favorite features of any Huawei phone this year, and that is the private space feature. So the private space feature, a very cool feature, that allows you to basically set up a separate partition on your phone and use that. So that's actually, again, with inside the security part of the device, security and privacy. 
If you scroll down here, you'll see private space right there. What private space lets you do is set up basically another copy of your phone. You can have new apps, um, new files, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna set up just a dummy pen here to access my second private space. It'll be separate from your regular pen. And again, it will allow you to associate a fingerprint to enable quick unlock or not. I'm not gonna set that up right now because I don't want it to take forever, um, but I'll show you guys sort of how this, this works. Uh, if you type in your pen that you set up for the private space, it will switch into your private space account, which will have a completely new desktop. You see it's got a new wallpaper. Everything is pretty much new compared to the original one that you guys saw with my default wallpaper. So you can set up whatever you want here, a work account, a separate personal account, etc. Really cool. And then when you want to go back to your main account, uh, all you have to do, swipe up and then put in your original pen, it'll switch back over. Now, if you have a fingerprint associated to both of these, you can easily switch between the two just by using the finger with your main account and then a different finger for your secondary account. So that's very easy. And also you guys can see right here, here's the notification. It's telling me there's no chargeable device. So wireless reverse charging has been turned off. So that's a little annoying um, that you have to turn it on and off manually, but private space, an amazing feature you should definitely set up on any Huawei device. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. That's my full look at the Mate 20 Pro, first 10 things to do. I'll have a lot more coverage of this phone as well as some other phones coming out this month. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon so you can get future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter, the links in the description. I appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.